Welcome back to Fallout 1.5 Resurrection. We're done with the whole Vex's gang quest and helping out William, and we've also rescued David Carpenter and returned him back to the sheriff and set it. So now it's time to move on to some other place in Albuquerque and see what quests there are to do. I think the first thing I'm going to do is go to the doctor and see if I can... Well, just see if they offer things, because I, I kind of just skipped through the dialogue last time I was there, but I'm pretty sure they offer some enhancements. Before that, though, I realized I've got some extra space since I've gone to set it. And it looks like the items from uh, Vex's gang are still here, so let's see what I can pick up. Desert Eagle. SMG. Psycho. How much space now? Uh, I'm pretty much full. That's good enough. Oh, I think each thrown shuriken can actually be picked up. I'm assuming that's why they're all over the place. Yeah, good enough. Hello. This looks strange. Oh my god, their name is Puss. <laughs> you hungry? Puss sell roasted meat. Only five bottle caps apiece. Puss meat is cheap and tasty. Ugh. That is the most disgusting sentence. Puss meat is cheap and tasty. Puss. Everyone call Puss Puss. He points to the stomach turning pimple on his face. But Puss don't mind. He roast meat slices and people pay. Puss happy with life. That meat seems suspiciously cheap. Where do you get it from and how do you roast it? No person asked Puss this before. You really interested? Of course I'm interested. Take it from the beginning, where you get the meat from, how you prepare it. Puss buy from hospital. Oh god. It's human meat. Doctors sell cheap when they don't need any more. Puss cut meat into tiny pieces. Must select carefully. Throw away what don't eat. Like needles, sutures, wires. Oh my god, that is disgusting. So this is human flesh. Don't be silly, lady. Hospital no treat animals. Oh, I found that out on my own. Poor woofer. Just imagine. Uh, wait, well, it's funny. Of course it's human meat. Doctors work with bodies of different things. When something left over, they say of no use. They sell to pus. What do you do with the meat from the hospital afterwards? Pus finds things that burn, put them in his barrel, and make fire. Roast it, mm-hmm. So you roast on anything that burns. Pus discover that some things make meat taste different. Tires you can taste a lot, but Pus cannot be picky. Pus thinks it's still better than raw meat. I mean, that's true. Do you get many customers? People come see Pus, come with growling stomach and five bottle caps. Give caps to Pus and eat. Everybody happy. I could sell you my dog. What the hell? No. It seems like my only options are basically kill Puss or just say goodbye. Or, of course, take some meat, which, hell no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> Did you have a doctor look take a look at that pimple? Um, okay, yeah, that doesn't lead anywhere. Alrighty then. Alright, I'm just gonna try not to think about that. <clears throat> hey, Doc. Tell me about the procedures. Put simply, by performing minor surgical procedures and transplanting higher quality organs, we're able to increase your strength, endurance, perception, and reaction speed, as well as make you more attractive. A noticeable improvement by, shall we say, one degree, aka one point. Since it is hard for the human body to accept and make use of organs that are too powerful, she can only undergo each of the operations once. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you that they are quite expensive. Who will you get the organs from? 
Could you be more specific? I don't concern myself with who our mercenaries catch in the wasteland. They're of no importance. If necessary, we use one of the local homeless. You'd have to ask Paul about the details. He handles donor collecting. Oh boy. I sure want those upgrades, but that does not sound in any way ethical. I think I'm just gonna have to swallow this one. I don't think, uh... I, yeah, I don't think I should try to convince him that it's wrong. Would it be possible to get some sort of a discount for the surgeries? We don't perform cheaper, lower quality procedures. If you need to ask for a discount, it would be better for you to just forget about the surgeries entirely. The only way to save money is to bring us a suitable donor yourself. We'll transplant the donor's organs to you, and if we get to keep the rest of the body, uh, the procedure will only cost half of the original price. Or if you have a donor for sale but aren't interested in any of the procedures, I'm sure we can come to some sort of an agreement as well. What will you give me for Carrie? Oh my god, that's horrible. Hell no. Okay, tell me about the surgeries. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to get everything done. But let's see how much they cost. I have a lot of money, but I probably can't afford all of them. Strength. Mm, it's, oh, 10,000 caps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, holy shit. I can only afford one. The hardest part's actually going to be just getting money. Not getting things worth the money, but literally getting caps. Because the whole fact that most of your money is usually tied up in items. And stores. Or, well, by stores I mean uh, merchants don't usually have all that much money on hand. Alright, hold on a second. So, let me just look. What do I want the most? Strength would give me a little bit more hit points. Not much, I don't think. And a bit more carry weight. I mean, that'd be okay. This would give me better sequence, better range combat distance modifiers. That could be okay. Although I already have a perk that gives me better perception for the uh, purposes of ranged combat distance modifiers. So I don't think that'd be too much of a... worth it. Endurance would give me more health. Charisma? Eh, that's already maxed out. Agility? Well, yeah. Agility would definitely be good. I don't know if actually giving one more agility point would give me any more action points. I think an additional action point might only happen every, like, even number of agility. So, six, eight, ten. I don't remember, though. Um, I'm gonna go with agility. So let's see if it does increase my action points. So I've got nine right now. The operation takes a long time, conducted gradually over a period of two weeks, and required two or more donors. Um, depending on the quality of their nervous pathways, I need to implant you shorter ones to make your reflexes arc faster and replace your tendons with looser ones. And just to make sure we'll transplant bigger lungs as you might need more oxygen to facilitate increased agility. Oh, shit. They don't all cost the same amount of caps. That's 25,000. I can't even afford that. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to save my money. Do you think you might have some work for me? Do you think we accept every self-taught quack whose greatest skill is using a stim pack? Certainly not, but if you can fight, as well as suppress your urge to kill, you could ask Paul. He told me he still wanted to take on a few more people. You'll find him in the second building of our hospital. What kind of work did you have in mind? We call it donor collecting. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't want a part of that. If you want to know more, you'll have to ask Paul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I wonder if it's even worth speaking to Paul. Could he perhaps have other work for me? I guess I'll speak with him and just see if there's anything else I could do. Or perhaps I could even save the donors or something? I don't know.
Oh shit, are these... These are the donors, aren't they? I think they are. Who's Paul? Who are you? Oh, I'm Paul. Mm, let's see. Dr. Fallober told you might have a job for me. Normal people don't associate with tribals, let alone help them. Because doing that can get you in trouble, and prevent you from finding any work in Albuquerque. Oh, right, I did help them. I guess they mainly use tribals? For their... donor collecting? What do you mean? Forget it, we just don't have any work for you. I see. Hmm. You know... The more I look at this situation, the more I want to just, like... Kill everybody here and take down the hospital. Let me see if I can, I don't know, try to convince him that it's wrong or something. Can I get back to that piece of dialogue? I don't think so. I don't, I'm sure it wouldn't matter anyway. I mean, what do I do? Just kill every single mercenary here? I'm not going to do that right now. If I do do something like that, it's going to be later after I've finished all or most of the stuff in Albuquerque, I think. Okay, I'm going to stop talking to people. <laughs> it's not very productive. Ooh. Locked. Intriguing. Aha! Uh -huh. Some underground place. Interesting. What's this? Water pump. Can I science it? Is it broken? Can't repair it. Hmm. Probably have to come down here later for a quest or something. Cause it looks like that's the only thing down here. Okay. Yeah, that's the vault over there. Hopefully I don't have to pay the doorway guard person again to get in, because I paid him off last time and then didn't go inside. Bunch of bombed out buildings. Don't see anybody of significance in here. This one's also locked, and that is some sort of an altar of some sort, apparently. secrets in these buildings. Surprised. Somebody's little hideout, I guess. Is there really nothing in here, though?
Let's see if there's anyone to speak to that would maybe sell stim packs. I think I need stim packs, don't I? How many do I have? Oh, I've got 13. Ah, never mind, I'm good. Let's see what's over here. It's the hunter's quarter, I believe. Yeah, I feel like I'm, there's not going to be many quests for me to do in Albuquerque, because I don't want to really help much of anybody. Except sort of William, kinda? I don't really like him, but... I mean, there's the clinic. They offer... Uh, they offer quests, but... They're horrible. There's the hunters. They're just bloodthirsty assholes who kill anyone who's not human. I don't want to help any of these people. Oh, there's an entrance to the vault here, too. Hmm. Ah, oh, there's the Wild Paradise. Could be something interesting in there. So Wild Paradise... Oh, Chuck's Weapons. Let's go check that out. So there's a Paradise, there's a compound for the Hunters, and then a weapon store. Well, I've got the money to buy pretty much anything. Howdy. See anything you like? I sell weapons of all kinds, and you, Missy, look like someone in need of a decent boomstick. Hee hee. His laugh is subdued and uncomfortably sly. <laughs> what are you talking about? Easy there, I'm Chuck, and this is my shop. Everything that happens here will be just between the two of us. We live in a dangerous world, in dangerous times. A man needs... a proper gun to defend what is his. That's what I offer. The means of self-defense. Alright, what do you got? Laser pistol. Rocket launcher. Freaking plastic explosives. Holy crap. Browning rifle. I don't remember what weapons were in Fallout 2 exactly. But I don't recognize the heavy grenade launcher, the light grenade launcher, or the browning rifle. I wonder if those might be new. Combat armor. Oh my god. How much is that? Oh! Oh, it's so expensive! I thought I was rich! I really could use that, though. Oh, man. So, let's see, what do I want to buy? I definitely want to buy the armor. And possibly the browning rifle? Like, I just don't know how good that is. I don't know. Can it do burst fire? Is it accurate? You know, is it better than just my assault rifle? It probably is. 14 millimeter. It's 14 millimeter. Do you, do you sell 14 millimeter? Holy crap, I think they maybe don't sell the ammo for it. They don't sell the freaking ammo for it. But, uh, yeah, it uses the same thing as this pistol, and this pistol's pretty damn powerful. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's way better than my assault rifle, just because it uses the 14mm ammo if nothing else, but there's no point in buying it at the moment because I can't even buy ammo for it here. I'd just be dead in the water. I think 14mm is pretty rare. Yeah, so there's 14mm. I do have some ammo for it, but like, with how rare and I'm pretty sure expensive, like, let's see how expensive this is. Well, well, it's not worth that much to sell, so it's probably not that much to buy. But still, it's not sold in anywhere near the quantities of something like this. This is sold just, like, by the massive case full. Uh, because of that, I don't think I'd be able to just burst fire all the time with that Browning rifle. Ammo would be a very serious problem. Meaning I don't think it could full-time replace my assault rifle. 
Hmm. I'm not gonna buy it for now. For now, I'm gonna go for the combat armor. Let's save it first, just in case I can't use it or something. I'm pretty certain I can. Okay, you need about... 1100? Wait, what? Oh, that's a thousand. There we go. Close. Hundred fifty more. Yeah, close enough. Okay. God, I look so cool. So what did that do? Armor class from 23 to 28. That's nice. Normal from... Ooh, look at that. I still don't know what the 2 slash percentage thing is all about, but it certainly looks a hell of a lot better. From 2 slash 25 to... Four slash, uh, 5 slash 40 for normal. That's probably the most important one to defend against. It's most of the damage I take. Yeah, that is way better. Holy crap. Let's try to get back as much money as possible. Also, this armor is friggin' heavy. 20 pounds? My elbow weighed 8 pounds. Just for the sake of lightening my load, I'm gonna sell the armor. Why does the money have to be all the way at the bottom? Okay, carry. Time to sell everything you have. Oh yeah, the gold nuggets. Oh my god, I totally forgot about them. Let's see, I think I wanted to carry a couple things. Because I've, I'm taking on so much weight. And it doesn't say how heavy it is there. Uh, two pounds, that's fine. I want to throw away everything that I don't use commonly. Except the radio, just in case. I don't know, maybe I'll get a signal at some point. I have no idea how that works, if any, if, if it works at all. But I'll keep that on me. Um, I'm going to give her all the antidote. Because if I need it, I can always get it from her. I don't use this type of ammo, so she can hold all of that. I certainly don't need that many freaking shots. In fact, I don't even need any of the drugs on me. Yeah, I guess I'll get rid of all the drugs. I don't use them that often. Um, I'll get rid of one of those, I'll sell the rest. This ammo I do need. This tool... I could use at some point if I need to repair something, even though my skill is terrible, but I certainly haven't need to use it yet, so... Toss it out. Toss that out. Okay, that'll light my load quite a bit. And I will take basically everything you got. I don't think I have to wait for all of this, actually. Let's see. Let's see how much more I can take. 22 pounds? No, I didn't think so. 11 pounds? Nope. Okay. I'll have to do for now. Alrighty. How much are these gold nuggets worth? Wait, that's it? 500 each? Really? Okay. That's disappointing. Let's see if I can get all my money back. 
Got about 6,000 more to go. Oh yeah, I can definitely get all my money back. Oh wow, that's too heavy. much as I thought it was. Exercise my clicking finger. 2892, 2892. Inventory management the game. has four freaking SMGs. Uh, I guess I'll take them all. Oh, wow, that's heavy. I could actually take them. It's astounding. Okay, I have all of her weapons that I don't want her to have except the combat shotgun. So I've pretty much cleared her out. I think that's going to do it. Yeah. And then some. Uh, let me see if I can buy some more armor piercing rounds. I really don't need any more hollow point, but could use some more AP. It's hollow point. No AP. No AP. Okay, I'm taking a couple SMGs back then. Made all my money back and then some. How are we looking? 74 pounds out of 110, even with heavier armor. Nice. Okay. I'm feeling pretty damn powerful. With this new armor, I could probably actually tank some hits. Let's check out Wild Paradise. Young meat is the best. Ugh. How about you tell me about everything this establishment can offer me? Booze, drugs, gambling, women and more. Just have a look around. Who's the owner? Woman named Lucy Chow, but she's usually called Madam Chow. Where can I find her? Up the stairs. Thanks. Nothing more to talk to them about. Pleasant day to you, miss. Is there something I can help you with? Perhaps there is. Depends on who you are. Lieutenant Sean Tarek of the 2nd Imperial Regiment. He casually salutes you. Currently working on a secret mission outside the city. He grins. The commander intended it to be punishment for sabotaging the morale of the men, but he actually did me a great service. I needed to take some rest from the Empire anyway. Now, can I do something for you or not? Oh, the Empire, so they came from the vault. Tell me about the Imperial City. I expected you to ask that. They say a lot of nonsense uh, about the Empire. We're actually people like all the rest. The only difference between us is that our ancestors came from a vault. They lived there for a long time, cramped in small space, under constant supervision and completely dependent on technology. That changed them. And when they finally emerged to the surface, old habits remained. When they passed them to us, uh, then they passed them to us and they still cling to us today. Nothing unusual, really, but even the Empire is slowly losing it from the drawn-out isolation. That's why I'm so glad I got away from it. Hmm. I've got a hunch that maybe I can recruit this person. 
You know they're sick of being where they are and they want to see the world? I'm also interested in your secret mission. What is it? I mean, it's supposed to be secret, right? But you want me to divulge top secret information to you? Actually, why not? <laughs> it doesn't... That was me laughing, by the way, not me doing his laugh. It doesn't... It doesn't matter anyway. I'm supposed to track down someone called the Anonym. According to my superiors, he's hiding somewhere in Albuquerque, trying to overthrow our emperor. And that's about all I know about him. As an Imperial soldier, I've got no chance of finding out anything, so I've narrowed my responsibilities down to drinking away army funds. No one from the command has complained yet. The Anonym. Hmm. Well, it looks like I can't take that on as a quest of my own, so... Oh well. Any work to be found in the Empire? He studies you for a moment. The Imperial Dwellers usually hire foreigners only rarely, but today's your lucky day. I've heard that advisor Elisa is currently looking for someone capable to run a few errands for her. She might give you the job. All you need to do is tell the guards at the gate that Lieutenant Tarek sent you. Then you'll be able to talk to Elisa directly. You'll find her in the Great Hall of the Imperial Palace. I didn't even need to bribe the guard, I guess. I owe you one. See you later. I'm sure glad I just talked to that random person at the bar. Holy crap. Whoa. Right after you finish talking, Tarek gets into a loud debate with the bartender. At that moment, a short man with a crooked smile taps you on the back. <laughs> Sorry, honey, but I couldn't help but overhear what you were talking about with the lieutenant here. I think I may have an offer for you. He extends his hand to you. I'm Benicio. Shake his hand. Rena, what's the offer? Working for the Empire isn't a bad idea. If if can you manage, um, if you can manage, you could earn a pretty sum. But if you really want to hit it big, there's only one person worth considering. He lowers his voice. Anonym. Hmm. Who are you and who's this Anonym? I don't ask nosy questions about Anonym. I'd advise you to do the same. All you need to know is that nobody will pay you more. Decide for yourself. If you're interested, pay me a visit. I have a room rented here in the Wild Paradise. I'll think about it. Uh, yeah, what was I saying before? Oh, yeah. I'm really glad I just decided to talk to every random person at the bar. Like, I just thought they were a bunch of faceless... Uh, just a bunch of faceless characters, but... That was actually, like, really important to talk to that person. Just when I think there's no point. Okay, so I can tell him about that person. Hmm. I kinda wanna follow up on the offer myself. Oh, this is just the bathroom, isn't it? Why the hell am I going in there? Actually, wait. What's this? Oh, that's like the changing room. Welcome. I'm Lucy Chow. But here, everyone calls me Madam Chow. Do you wish to rent a room just for yourself, or do you desire the company of one of my girls? I, neither? I wanted to ask if you had any work for me. Uh, I'll rent a room. 200 caps for a day. Uh, if you pay for the whole week, only a thousand. Mm, never mind. There they are. What if these people have anything to say? I think they're just sex workers. The girl doesn't respond to you, merely quivers with fear. Oh. Is she okay?
Can I do anything? Like, is there a skill I could use? <laughs> Repair her. <laughs> Fix her. First aid? I mean, I don't think she's actually, like, physic. Yeah, she looks healthy already. Oh, Cindy. I guess her name's Cindy. Excuse me, Woofer. Excuse me, Woofer. Thank you, Woofer. There's pretty much no way in hell I'm going to accept this offer, but I just want to see if I can do something by talking with them. Tell me what Ananim wants from me. Not so fast. First, I need to explain something. When you start working for Ananim, there's no going back. Maybe you think you'll just snoop around for a bit and bring the info straight to the Empire for a nice paycheck. But that's not how it works. You won't hear anything from me that could harm Ananim. I'm just hired workforce, same as you will be. And I'll see to it that Ananim's contacts in the Empire know that you're one of us. They'll make sure you won't be given any work where you could harm us. When you join Ananim, it's permanent. Are we clear on this? Okay, so this is basically the game just straight up saying... Yeah, if you want to see if you could work some magic and then get out, you can't. So, no. I refuse. A man in this establishment tried to offer me a job for the anonym. Maybe he could help you with your search. Uh, yeah, sure. He lazily waves his hand. Don't worry about it. Some drunkard was just trying to impress you. Nothing more. No reason to waste time on that. Uh, I guess that's a possibility. Goodbye. That's it? Okay. Well, I'm just gonna leave that for now. Hunter's Compound, or should I go to the Empire? Let's go to the Empire. I'm curious if I'm going to be able to speak like, uh... When I, sell, when I say that Tarok or whatever his name sent me to go speak with Elisa or whatever her name is. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting everyone's name, but if I say that, is it going to take me just to speak with her and then that's it? And then, like, take me out as sort of a cutscene kind of thing? Or am I going to be able to actually explore the whole vault? Let's see. Supposed to see advisor Elisa for work. He grimaces. Elisa must be getting really desperate to hire foreigners as well. Hope she knows what she's doing. Very well, you may enter, for now. Next time, you're going to need a real invitation. And it looks like I would have indeed had to pay them again to get inside. Yeah, looks like I just got free reign of the place. Alright. Hey, it's one of those brain bots. The robot pays you no attention and continues to move along the set route. Its central processing unit is currently in energy saving mode. A direct interaction is required to fully start it up. Wait, robot, I want to talk to you. It reacts to being addressed and turns in your direction. Concurrently, it activates both its mechanical arms and starts searching its storage compartment containing a wealth of cassette tapes. After a short while, it takes one of them and inserts it in the record player in his chest. You hear a high-pitched male voice. I wish you a pleasant day. I am an information robot programmed to answer questions pertaining to the Empire. May I assist you? You certainly may. I have many questions. It will be my pleasure to answer your questions. What do you wish to know specifically? When the tape finishes, the robot puts it back among the others. This robot seems very inefficient. That's one of the things I love about the Fallout 1 and 2 universe. Is, you got all this future technology, but a lot of it is just, like, comically ridiculous. It's a freaking robot with, like, a brain in a jar on top, and yet it's formulating its responses. Well, it's not formulating its responses. It's just literally playing back tapes. I mean, it's ridiculous, and I love it. Who's the ruler of the Imperial City? 
The monarchy is ruled by the emperor and a three-member advisor council. It's been so since the beginning of the empire, which was established by the last overseer in accordance with the wishes of the dwellers. The current ruler is his brother, the wise emperor, uh, Misrael. Advisor Elisa and advisor Aran help him with the heavy burden of leadership. Builder, the third advisor, has passed away recently and his successor has, successor has not yet been determined. Tell me about the local vault. Uh, vault number 16 is located below the Imperial Palace. In it, the ancestors of the current dwellers found refuge during a time when radioactive doom made life on the surface impossible. Due to an administrative error, two people were given the role of the Overseer. A large group of followers formed under each of them, and these groups frequently clashed. Over time, the clashes intensified so much that the vault nearly stood at the brink of a civil war. The threat of war, however, was averted at the last moment by an agreement made between the two overseers. The vault protected its dwellers for the next 60 years, until the decision to leave was made. Today, it is used for research and defense, which must be done in secret to ensure the safety of the Empire. I'm really intrigued by the whole vault and the dwellers in this whole place, because it seems to be pretty heavy with technology. Which means it might be the first place I actually get to use my science skill. So far, I'm pretty sure I haven't used my science skill a single time. And I'm like, what, 13 hours into the game or something? How does the Empire get along with neighboring groups? The Imperial Dwellers feel no need to associate with people from the Wasteland. Mm -hmm. The only contact with the outside world is contractual relation with the mutant uh, mutant hunters and a number of foreign traders for exchanging of goods. Tell me more about the contractual relations with the hunters. The Imperial army was greatly weakened after the massive ghoul attack. That's why a contract was made with the mutant hunter faction. Emperor Misrael gave them the materials necessary for the construction of their base, and in return he expected them to clear the surrounding desert of the ghoul menace. But the hunters have been lax in their mission. During the next attack, they even let the ghouls reach the walls of the city itself. It was only the discipline of the Imperial soldiers that proved to be the decisive factor in victory again. Despite this, the hunters still dare make demands on the Empire. Were it not for the Emperor's foresight, their growing greed would have surely bankrupted the city. Hmm, so there's some animosity there. Who does the Empire trade with? The Empire trades some of its technologies, which can be safely used, even in the outlying villages. In return, the Empire receives several varieties of food and scarce goods. Okay. Tell me about the ghoul attack. Not too interested in that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see, something else. Can I find a merchant around here? The appointed supply administrator is responsible for trade. The administrator's office is located in the building across the street from the southern end of the Imperial... Okay, I'll find it. What rules are there for foreigners? In the interests of the safety of the Empire, the rules set for foreigners must be strict. They can only enter the city with an official invitation from one of the dwellers, and they shall be observed for the whole length of their stay by patrolling soldiers. They are expected to behave properly. The Empire does not appreciate foreigners walking around the city with weapons drawn or bothering the dwellers. The foreigner should take care of his business as soon as possible and leave. And what if a foreigner breaks the rules? Should the foreigner act aggressively, the information robots are well equipped to terminate him. Okay. They have lasers, I believe. Is it possible for a foreigner to become one of the dwellers? The Empire can only be a home to those that were born in it. Foreigners are not allowed to become part of the Empire, as admitting them could threaten the old world values it is trying to uphold. Okay, that's all I need to know. They, should, they said I shouldn't have weapons drawn. No one seems to be stopping me, but I guess just to be safe, I'll take these off. I mean, are the information bots really going to start shooting me if I start just talking to people?
That is a huge building. This must be the Vault Dwellers. I'm really curious what they sell here. You look like the seller person. Can I just use this computer? Let's science it. Hello, I'm Margaret Dandridge, the supply officer. You can call me just Margaret. I know you foreigners aren't much for formality. Have you come to trade? Hello, Margaret. Maybe I have. What does the supply officer do? Ah, uh, of course you're here for the first time. I'm in charge of distributing supplies to the dwellers. Basically, I make sure every dweller has what he needs. But I'm also authorized to trade with foreigners. To that end, I'm authorized to make use of the most common currency, caps. That's why I asked if you were here to trade. Well, this seems like a stupid question, but let's see where it leads. The dwellers just get everything they ask for? I know you foreigners have trouble believing or understanding that. The dwellers get everything they need to live and do their job. That's a bit different than getting everything they ask for. But usually no one complains. We don't really lack anything. We have no currency. The dwellers have no need of caps. My office is the only store in the whole city, set up precisely for foreigners. All right, let's trade. Well, yeah, there's some more of the 14 millimeter. So let's see how much it costs to buy. Yeah, it's really not that expensive. It's just, it's just a matter of actually finding it in the quantities you need to really make use of it. I mean, I'm just gonna buy it. Let's see what else they offer. What the hell is that? Motion sensor. Detects the movement of biological material over a distance of meters using a tuned radar device. Having in your inventory will help you avoid outdoor encounters. Plus 20% outdoorsman. Oh. Hmm. It's probably really heavy though, isn't it? It's, it's moderately expensive. It's probably really heavy though. I don't want to have a million things in my inventory. Nah, it's fine. I, don't, I mean, uh, random encounters are kind of good for XP. Yeah, she doesn't have much. I don't think I need the stims either. Got 13. Okay. Let's sell a little bit. One or two of those. Uh, I think just one. I don't remember exactly how much they're worth, but pretty sure two would be way more than they can afford. Yeah, about a thousand. That's good. Let's go speak with Elisa and see what she wants me to help with. Wait, stranger. Uh, just to be sure, I have to warn you not to draw your weapons in the building. We won't disarm you. You're guests in our city and it wouldn't be respectful, but keep them holstered. That's the Imperial building, some call it the palace. Okay, yep. I definitely have my weapons holstered, but my companions, or companion, doesn't. Hope oh, that's not a problem. Whoa. What? Um. 
I guess carry having a weapon counts. Right? I mean, technically I have my fists equipped, or whatever. Alright, hold on. Wait here until I return. Alright. Are we good? Yeah, okay. Wolfer's fine, right? Yeah. They respect the doggy. Now, where would Elisa be? Ah, uh, that must be them. Oh, no, that's the Emperor. An important looking woman. Okay, that's probably it then. That's, that's probably it? I just called her an it. That's probably her. My apologies, stranger, but I don't really have the time to deal with your issues. My position involves many important tasks that can bear no delay. It'd be best if you left immediately. Uh, what tasks would those be? She looks shocked. That's really none of your business. Do you even know who you're talking to? I'm Advisor Elisa. Asking about my duties would get you into a lot of trouble. It would be wise to avoid that and leave me alone. <laughs> Wait, I've been looking for you. Lieutenant Sean Tarek told me that you needed a capable person for a job. I'd like to sign up. That good-for-nothing sent you. He really does try my patience. The only job he could know about was the one assigned to him, but he's been tarrying for, uh, tarrying for an eternity. He likely hopes to pass it on to someone else this way. But, she thinks for a moment, that's not a completely stupid idea. The errand would indeed be more suited to someone without a connection to the Empire. She studies you carefully. Do you really wish to work for the Empire? If the reward is sufficient, I will gladly offer him my services. I'm glad to hear that. But before you do so, you should know that I demand absolute loyalty. You may only serve the Emperor unconditionally or not at all. If you are willing to agree to this, I could have other uses for you as well. But I want to hear a clear answer from you. Don't even think of betraying us. I will be watching you closely. Actually, I'm afraid that even our enemy will know if you decide to work for us. The uncomfortable truth is that the whole Empire is riddled with his informants. Alright, that's fine. I mean, I don't know much about the the Empire, but it seems okay. You know, kind of controlling, and obviously they have their own problems, but they certainly don't seem bloodthirsty or anything like that. I can't say it any clearer. I'm in, so tell me who I'm supposed to go up against already. Then we have an agreement. You'll receive your orders from me and no one else. To that end, I will arrange you a pass into the city in my name. It is a great privilege, one that you must use with discretion. And now for your assignment. You've probably already heard of a person calling himself Anonym. He's a vicious terrorist trying to overthrow Emperor Misrael and the advisors so that he can institute his own dictatorship. We must prevent that from happening. We were recently contacted by an informant that allegedly knew the location of Anonym's secret hideout. He was afraid to come into the Empire, so with the with advisor Aran's permission, I sent a squad of soldiers to meet him in the dead quarter. Advisor Aran ordered them to report immediately after receiving the information, but we have not heard from them since. I'm afraid that they've been lured into a trap. That's why I need you to search the place and find out what happened to them. I don't know if it will help, but they were supposed to meet in the western end of the dead quarter, near the defensive wall. Uh, I should probably say this, I don't... I'm pretty sure midget is not an okay word. So I'm just going to not say that part, but uh, maybe you should know that someone offered me a job for Anonym. The man lives in the wild paradise. I found the trustworthiness of such a man to be rather dubious. It is likely he was simply bragging or trying to make a profit off you. Nothing unusual in that Blackwater world of yours. Still, I will have him investigated. You should concentrate on your task instead and find our soldiers as soon as possible. Why is everybody so dismissive of this person who offered me this information? Or offered me this this job? It's suspicious. Alright.
right? Who's this Iran you spoke of anyway? Can he be trusted? Advisor Iran has been faithfully serving the Emperor for many years. He is the commander-in-chief of the Imperial Army during the defense of the city from a ghoul attack. He stood right at the front line. He almost paid with his life for his courage. Every soldier would be willing to fight for him to the bitter end. There can be no doubt that he is trustworthy. Still, I regret that he doesn't pay Anonym's threat as much attention as it deserves. But back to your assignment. Find out what happened to the squad of soldiers we sent out. This matter is of utmost importance to the Empire. That's the plan. Goodbye, Advisor Elisa. A lot of other people I could try talking to in here. But, for now... I think... I'm gonna end this episode here. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to probably explore the rest of this place, rest of the Empire, and then go check out the Dead Quarter for the missing soldiers.